My name's Laura Marie Bigger, and I'm a Staff Sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. My MOS by trade is a bulk fueler, a 1391, but over in Iraq I went over as security and was also tasked out with the Lioness program. The, the training for the Lioness program when I went through was with the 2-7 Marines. They're grunts, they do that on a daily basis. So they take those females and their, their best Marines come in and train us on how to search, um, how to, to question, and also how to be more comfortable up front and close with the Iraqis. There's a checkpoint and it normally funnels down so that the, the vehicles have to stop in a certain location, uh, not too close to any military personnel, obviously due to, for our protection. Um, all members in that vehicle are then told they have to get out of the vehicle. The males would then go over to either the um, American males or the Iraqi police males and they check their IDs and everything. They have actual IDs. The females have no such IDs at all. Um, and the females would then come with me and sometimes they, they try not to get out of the vehicle because they're sick or have too many children or things like that, but that's exactly when we need to search them because they might be hiding something. One of my biggest fears would be being off on the side there searching one of those females and actually hitting a pressure switch or something that that woman had placed or maybe her husband or another male placed on her to then injure an American or another Iraqi police or somebody something like that. I had an extreme influence over a handful of women there. They would come through on a daily basis and the first time they had met me they didn't necessarily know what to expect. They did what I told them because I was American and in uniform. But when they would see the Iraqi police actually listening to me and doing what I tell them, or if I tell their superior officer who's messed up or something like that, then there's actual repercussions that are followed through with. And every day that those females would, would come through and see me again and again and again, it was just, they were amazed and ho hopefully feel that I was actually putting an impression on them that someday they could be in a position where, where others would listen to them. And there was one other girl that, um, she was always in the vehicles that came through the checkpoint, and I will never forget her face. She was very pale, dark hair, but bright blue eyes, and every day she was one of those that just looked at me like I was a star. And just, even their clothing was a little bit of an American influence, which you can say is good or bad, but they still had their appropriate head coverings and everything like that. But just to see her so impressed and so intrigued by seeing Americans there helping them, that, that was definitely a girl I enjoyed seeing every day. My bachelor's is a biology bachelor's with a pre-medicine emphasis. And my original plan was to go into medicine and become a doctor. I'm kind of on the fence for that right now because there's so many different changes coming up with our new president. Um, so I'm thinking of possibly going for a master's in a, more of an environmental biology side, something I've always been extremely interested in and it's definitely in need right now. Um, I have neck and back problems. A lot of the gear that we carry is, is quite heavy that we wear on a daily basis, so that can wear on anyone's structure. Um, even the 200 pound males end up having difficulties with that. Um, so the VA has been helping me out. Uh, taken some structural x-rays just to make sure that they can help me out so nothing is long term. I'm Terry Brookins. I've been in the Navy as a hospital corpsman for 25 years. As a corpsman we basically take care of either the Marines or the CBs. I was the chief hospital corpsman. I was the chief of the BAS, Battalion Aid Station, in Fallujah on Camp Knot, which was the CB camp. I volunteered to go out with the Marines. They would go out and do their knock and talks and then they decided to start bringing in medical care for the people in the villages of Fallujah. The buildings were basically, they had big rooms inside because we would go inside the buildings of someone's home and they'd have several big rooms and the people would sleep on the floor. They'd have mats that they all slept on. The children, they were all excited because the Marines were there and so they just wanted to come up just to see us and say that they were sick when they really weren't. All they saw was these invaders coming in and taking over their, their area. And for us to go in and give them any sort of help, I think, made them trust us more, made them realize that we weren't really the bad guys, that maybe the bad guys were really the bad guys, like Saddam Hussein and, and his sons. It brought us closer to the people in the villages. They knew that we were there to help them, to try to give them whatever we could to make, make things better. 
Being outside the wire means that you're not on the safety net of a base. But going outside the wire for the first time and not actually being in a convoy and then getting out of the vehicle, that was, it was a little scary the first time. My first patient was actually a little girl, probably four or five. She let me take her picture, and a lot of the people don't let us do that. So I have a picture of her, and I, it's, it's my greatest memory of being over there because I know that I was there with a purpose, and that was to help these people. Not just to, you know, take care of my CBs, not just to take care of the Marines, but to go over and help these people with Fallujah. That just, it was pretty amazing. The greatest benefit for me from the VA would be my education. I've already gotten my bachelor's degree. I'm working on my, uh, it's a master's PhD program for industrial organizational psychology. I spent 10 years on active duty. That 10 years flew by. I said, okay, well, I'm not gonna throw that away, so I'm gonna do 10 years in the reserves. That 10 years flew by. At the end of that 10 years, about 19 years, I, got, I was mobilized for the first time. It's just, it's in my blood. I've been doing it my whole adult life, more than half of my life, and it's what I love to do. My name is Michael Chesser. I am a uh, doctor at the Phoenix VA. I am a lieutenant colonel in the uh, Air Force Reserve now. Um, I am in the 944th Air Medical Staging Squadron at Luke Air Force Base. As such, I'm an active reservist. My responsibilities here are primarily teaching. This is a teaching hospital. Primarily supervise the ward teams with the residents and the, the medical students. Assist in taking care of the patients while we're training them to uh, basically become internal medicine doctors. The CCAT teams are a relatively new concept in the Air Force and this is part of our combined Army-Navy Air Force effort to um, care for, rapidly stabilize and, and air evac uh, our sick and wounded out of a, a combat zone. A CCAT team comprises a, a doctor, a critical care nurse, and a respiratory therapist and we are especially trained and equipped to use a, um, a highly portable uh, allowance of equipment to fly into a, an air base or a smaller hospital, uh, grab someone that's in an ICU, and while continuing their ICU level of care, so we can keep them on the breathing machine, the ventilator, all the different drugs that they're getting to maintain their, their blood pressure or heart rate or, or whatever they're on, um, we can maintain that same level of care and then put them into the back of a, an ambulance, a bus, get them out to the flight line, and then whichever cargo plane is available, which 30 minutes prior may have been carrying cargo, which they've just pulled out, we can now reconfigure that into a, um, an airborne hospital, if you will, and uh, continue their same level of care as we take them to another uh, intensive care unit. When I was in Iraq, we did just that, uh, transporting people from the smaller bases in Iraq to our main theater hospital where we were based, and our primary function was to take those same patients out of Balad uh, Air Force Base, uh, now it's called Joint Base Balad, and fly them to Germany. The end result of this is we've actually made history. We have cut the combat lethality of, we have cut the lethality of combat wounds in half. Uh, from World War I up until this present conflict, the average rate of, of death with combat wounds was about 20%. So we are now at about 10%. And our main theater hospital in Iraq at, at Balad Air Force Base is bragging a 98% um, survival rate which again is, is unheard of. We often think in terms of VA healthcare as the older generations, the, the World War II crowd, the, the Korea crowd, the Vietnam crowd now, but um, this conflict is such that these patients are, are getting hurt and having, they will have these long-term issues to deal with that um, um, they need a place to get their primary care that understands what they've been through, why they're different. The average civilian doctor has no idea what happens when an IED goes off and, and someone's brain gets significantly traumatized in the blast. They really need a place that understands the nature of what happened to them. A lot of veterans work in the VA, and I think that's another reason why our patients feel very comfortable here, is because like being in a military hospital, they feel among family. I take care of young veterans in the combat zone and then I get to come home and I have patients here that were at Tet, uh, were at the Battle in Way City that stormed the beaches of Normandy, that were at Inchon Reservoir. You, you read a military history text and I've got to meet someone and, and care for them that were actually there doing it. And um, I find that to be an honor and a privilege.